Today I'm reading 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 through 13. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Here endeth the reading. I have to be honest with you. My heart breaks a little bit for Elijah. I mean, the life of any prophet is not easy. But the plight of Elijah, Elijah seems... How particularly difficult. See, Elijah has faithfully done his duty. He stood up courageously to Ahab. He outsmarted and outbelieved the 450 priests of Baal. And he overcame the masses that came to attack him. So he'd be justified in thinking that at the end of the day, he could stand there and hear his God say, Well done, my faithful servant. But that's not at all what happens. Elijah has barely a minute to revel in the fullness of the task he's just completed before Queen Jezebel sends word to him that she's coming for him. So to the wilderness he flees. He's tired. He's hungry. He's pushed to the absolute breaking point. So he plants himself down underneath the shade of a broom tree. And he says, I give up. Enough, God. Just take my life and let me be. But God replies by sending an angel who says, Elijah, what are you doing here? Get up and eat and drink and continue on. Your work is not yet done. 
And so he does. For 40 days, he journeys on till he finds himself at Mount Horeb, the sacred place of holy encounters. Exhausted, worn out, just downright beat from the journey, he climbs into a cave and goes to sleep. And then he hears the voice, the voice of God saying, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah says, God, I have been zealous for you. I'm the last one who believes in you standing. All the others have disappeared. And now the enemies of God are out to get me. To tell you the truth, I'm here in this cave hiding for my life. And God feels for Elijah, senses his distress and his despair and his depression. He says, go, stand on the edge of the mountain and I will pass by. So Elijah does. He stands on the edge of the mountain and the wind picks up in a fierce storm. Rocks are breaking and falling apart all around him. But Elijah doesn't see God. And then the earth starts to quake and tremble below his feet. But still Eliza doesn't see God. And then fire erupts all around him, consuming bush and tree, burning everything to the ground. But still, Elijah does not see God. And then descends the sound of sheer silence. And Elijah knows that finally he has found the face of God. In the stillness, in the peace, in the calm, he's made whole and healed. I imagine that Elijah sat there in that moment thinking, at last, I am done. My purpose has been fulfilled. Now I can dwell with my God forever. But God breaks the silence, saying to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? Often in our lives, having done the hard work of pursuing what we believe our purpose to be, we find ourselves spent, exhausted, ready to throw in the towel. It seems like the challenges of our living and the struggles of this world crash over us like a series of unceasing waves. Before us, there are so many stories of hate and struggle, despair and fear, a pandemic, a nation divided by race and politics, neighbors struggling to make ends meet, friends facing the loss of one they love, children hungry, the environment under threat. There comes a moment when, like Elijah, we find ourselves wondering if our life matters at all. Have our efforts been in vain? Is there anything that we can do to make a difference? And in that moment, in those worn out and hard times, we need to heed the lesson of Elijah's life. When the pressures and pain of life become too much, we need to make our way into the silence. We need to look past the violent winds of hate, beyond the trembling of distrust and division, through the fires of anger and fear, into the peace of the stillness. 
When our lives feel as if they've lost their purpose, we must retreat to the quiet and the still. For it is in the sacred silence that God's true presence is revealed. But don't be fooled. The spiritual way is not a way of disengagement. The spiritual life is not a life focused solely on what is in there for me. But the way of faith is a way of serving, reaching out, living in unity with those around us. When life pushes us to the edge, when we're broken and in despair and worn thin, God invites us to come into the stillness, into the silence, into the presence of the holy, where our soul will be restored and our life refreshed. But be ready, because in that stillness you will hear the voice of God that says, what are you doing here? I am with you always with you i will go so soak in the stillness of my presence but go and serve one another go and serve in love go and serve in faith go and serve in the promise that when we join hand and heart body and soul when we work for the building of the kingdom of god here on earth, all will be well. All will be welcomed. All will know the fullness of God. And all will live. So friends, if this world has got you down, if the pressures and the pains of this trying and changing time have you wondering, what more can you do? Retreat to the stillness of the holy. Soak in the restoring power of dwelling with the Lord. Let the grace of God wash over you and bring you peace. And then get up and go forward and give the gift of your love. For that is the way of faith and that is the way forward now and always may you go with god Join as one in hope.
each other, lean on each other, lean on each other in His love. Lean on each other, lean on each other, lean on each other.